Hi everyone, Tom Wolf here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I created this lo-fi vintage pad sound. Okay, so that was the patch Broken and Destitute from my set Automaton. And as you can hear, it's got this kind of rich analog vintage style pad. Um, quite warm, a little bit lo-fi, and then you've got this kind of bit crushed overtone to it. Um, so I'll show you how I created that patch. Over here in the synthesis window, I've already taken everything apart. So let's start with Oscillator 1. So on oscillator one, we've got it set to a sawtooth wave, and that sounds like this on its own. Okay, so before we've got the filters, it's incredibly bright, but we've got four oscillators stacked on each other. We've got the detune up a little bit because that sort of um, detunes the four different oscillators against each other, so it creates a really fat, warm kind of analogy sound. So let's just remove that. You can hear the sound thins out quite a lot. Let's turn it down a little bit, a little bit loud. You can also see we've got LFO1 on the tuning. Now we've got a really, really tiny amount. The reason for this is because I like creating these sort of washes that are really subtle but kind of add to that vintage quality. So what the LFO is doing is it's just slightly altering the oscillator tuning over time it's synced to two bars so it's going to cycle across two bars and it's going to be really gradually changing the tuning of that oscillator and i just find it gives it a more kind of vintage analog sound because in the world of analog things drift so as you can hear less is definitely more So I've literally got it set to 0.05 and that's just helping with that kind of analog character. So then we've got VCF1. So let's switch that on and you can see VCF1 is set to a vintage low pass. We've got the cutoff sort of around a third of the way. We've got the resonance about a quarter of the way up. It is key following, that's up a little way. No drive and the cutoff is being controlled by envelope 2 as well. So envelope 2, we've got a very slow kind of attack. We've got a very long decay, sustains about three quarters of the way up and then we've got quite a long release. Um, on our amp envelope as well, we've got very similar settings. So the decay is not quite as long and the sustain is very fractionally higher, I think, but it's pretty much the same. We're also controlling both of these by velocity. So the harder you play, the louder the sound is gonna be and also the more the filter will open. So let's hear that. So we've got rid of that nasty kind of buzzy top and we've really created this sort of vintage sound already. Um, and that's kind of the meat of the patch really. Um, then on lane two, so let's unmute this and we'll mute lane one quickly. We've got the FM oscillator one. So the input for the FM oscillator one is coming from lane one. So that's gonna be modulating from the input oscillator you as you can see it is coming in before the filter so we're going to get that full kind of um, bright sound from oscillator one so let's just play the fm oscillator so we've got this really kind of buzzy lo-fi sound there so if we look at fmo so we've got a quadric sine wave um We've got it set to mono and it's set to FM by input, which means that the frequency will be modulated by the input, which is oscillator one. And we've got the FM set to about a quarter of the way. So let's remove that and you can hear what it's doing. So that's our quadric sign. 
and it's kind of bringing in that bright sawtooth sound from oscillator one then that's running through vcf2 so let's switch that on so on vcf2 we've got it set to mid drive low pass we've got the cutoff set to roughly the same as we did on lane one uh, we've got a tiny little bit of resonance we've got key follow up a, a little way as well no drive and then envelope two is also controlling this so that now sounds like this so that gives us this really kind of unique lo-fi sound to it which just adds a little something So then we move on to lane three. So on lane three, we'll start with the mix plugin. So this is taking a signal from input one and a side chain from lane two, and it's mixed to 50-50. So that is basically gonna be a blend of both of the first two lanes. You can see this is happening post filter as well on both of them. got the volume set to pretty low here we don't want a lot of this sound I'll turn it up for the moment so then we've got VCF4 okay so we've got it set to low pass vintage and we've got the cut off to about halfway a fair bit of resonance and a little bit of drive as well but the main thing that's happening here is the cutoff is being controlled by LFO G1 so let's have a look at LFO G1 we've got it set to random glide uh, we've got it synced to eighth notes and it's not restarting either so it's free flowing and it's creating this sort of random sound which is just being brought in occasionally and then we've got vcf3 which we can activate that and that is our decimate so we've now got that kind of lo-fi decimation which was sort of sat on the top of the patch sort of floating around above that kind of vintage pad sound and we're not key following we've got the cutoff set quite high so we can now merge these sounds together so we've got our original sawtooth oscillator there and our fm oscillator So now we're starting to get to that warm kind of vintage pad and we've got the uh, decimate over the top of it. We'll turn that back down because that was set to quite low. We don't want a lot of that on the patch. There we go, just a little flavor. So then let's look at our effects that we have on here. So on the main channel, we've got it set to a chorus effect on here. So just a little bit of warm chorus to give it that analog feel. not too much set to just under a quarter and then we've got delay one as well just set to stereo delay just giving it a little bit of extra ambience then we've also got the new reverb which i absolutely love this reverb um we've got send one set all the way to the top which means it's going to send this whole signal to there and then we'll turn bus one up to about halfway And now we've got that kind of ambience. So we've got the pre-delay set very low. Uh, we've got a reasonable amount of dampening going on, the decay quite high, and we've got the mix 100% wet. So everything that's coming into out of here is our reverb signal. So we're getting close to our sound now. Let's have a look at lane four. So first thing to notice is that lane four is just coming out of bus one. Okay, so that's just going to be coming through this reverb here and it's going to be 100% wet signal. So let's play that now.
So in oscillator two, what we've got is we've got a sawtooth wave and that is set to joule. So we're going to have two sawtooth waves together. They're detuned slightly and you'll notice here as well, the tuning is set to an octave up from oscillator one, which is the important part of this. So we can then switch on our XMF1, our cross mod filter. Now I'm pretty much using this um, as a normal filter really. It's bringing in a slight bit of the signal from lane three, but we've got two low pass four poles here. We've got the cutoff set relatively low and a little bit of resonance, little bit of key follow. And then we've got some overload as well, not a lot and a slight offset too on the frequency for the two different filters. And we've also got it set to envelope two, which is what's controlling our other filters on oscillator one and the FM oscillator one. Let's remove that. There we go, we're getting a much more stunted sound from that. And then we've got mix two as well, which is bringing in a little bit of this kind of bit crush sound post filter. So that's just giving us a little bit of extra character on that reverb. So the reason for this lane is it was kind of to create a sort of uh, fake shimmer reverb really. So um, if you've used a shimmer reverb before, you might know that it adds this kind of octave overtone that is um, looped round in the reverb and adds this really nice kind of shimmer sound to it and it's great for creating these sort of ambient pads. There's no real way that I'm aware of in Zebra to add that shimmer reverb so what I've done is I've created my own by creating this extra oscillator that's an octave up and then adding it at 100% mix into the reverb feed. So let's unmute our other oscillators. Just adding a little bit of kind of delicate ambience to the top there. So that's our patch. Um, the last thing that we can look at is the mod wheel. Now on the mod wheel we had a tremolo effect. So let's have a look at how we did that. So over in the mod matrix, you can see we've got... Uh, oh yes, yeah, so the last thing we've also got is tiny tiny little bit of modulation from LFO2 here on the VCA volumes of lanes one and two which are these two here so that's just a slight bit of modulation again it's kind of to emulate that um, that vintage sound uh, where things just drift slightly and I thought that we could just add a tiny tiny little bit of that on here just to give it a bit more kind of vintage character so for the mod wheel We've got the mod wheel controlling LFO G2, which is controlling the master output, which is this one here. So LFO G2 is going to be turning that down. LFO G2 is set to a sine wave. Uh, it's set to eighth notes and it restarts after two bars, which is going to keep it in sync with this. Um, and then that is not sounding unless we've got the mod wheel on, because otherwise we'd have the tremolo effect all the time. So let's play that. So that was how I created the patch Broken and Destitute from my set automaton. Hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial and found it useful. If you did, please do subscribe to my channel as I will be creating some more of these videos to share with you. 
If you'd like to check out the set Automaton as well, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. Uh, Automaton is a set of 100 patches and they've all got this kind of uh, lo-fi, grainy, robotic style sound to them, um, which was inspired by the Tron Legacy soundtrack. So if you've ever listened to that and wondered how you can get that sort of gritty, lo-fi, vintage synth sound, hopefully this set will help you. Thank you for watching. Until next time, take care.